introduce our next speaker, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset, Jacob rees -Mogg. Jacob gained the seat from Labour in the 2010 general election and now holds the seat with a majority of 10,235 votes. Before entering Parliament, Jacob had a very successful career in investment management. And I'm pleased to know that he has maintained an involvement in that field since it is of great benefit for members of Parliament to have an interest beyond the Westminster bubble. <laughs> In Parliament, Jacob has served on the European Scrutiny Select Committee, the Treasury Select Committee, and the Brexit Select Committee. His questions in these committees have been forensic, but it is rightly in the chamber of the House of Commons, for centuries the cockpit of our nation's political life, that Jacob has excelled. He has become a beacon of hope for those that believe in the maintenance of conservative values and the timelessness of their benefits. He invariably conducts himself in a way which displays the modest demeanour, some might say too modest. Today at this time of crisis in our nation's affairs, he occupies the key position of Chairman of the European Research Group. In these momentous times, it is not always possible to call every twist and turn correctly, but the defeat inflicted upon the withdrawal agreement in the House of Commons reflected the comprehensive analysis of the defects of this agreement conducted by Jacob and his colleagues in the European Research Group. Thank you. <laughs> they demonstrated that this version of Brexit did not mean Brexit and leads instead to vassalage. Yeah. Jacob, we are all in your debt. <laughs> We often overuse superlatives, but today I ask you to welcome one of the most outstanding parliamentarians of our time and the truest of Conservatives. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob rees -Mogg. An incredibly flattering introduction. I think we must be talking about somebody else. Uh, and then I realised I had someone to speak. Um, Christian and I may have to disappear at very short notice because there's going to be a debate on um, Lord's Amendment to the Tenants Bill. So if we suddenly disappear in a puff of smoke, it is not that we have weakened or softened or given way, it is because the whip's caught. But I think we are facing a really important point in our Constitution. Because there are people who are trying very hard to stop Brexit, and they have 65 days, 9 hours, 90 minutes, and 9, 8, 7, etc. seconds in which to do it. So they are going to do everything that they can in this remaining time not to delay it, not to get a deal, but to keep us bound to the European Union. And that is what the Yvette Cooper Bill is about. It's what the loser's vote is about. It is in relation to stopping us leaving. And we should be very clear about that. Because in our country, people expect the result of a democratic vote to be respected and not watered. And they wrap it up in pretty rapidly. <laughs> They say that it's about asserting the control of the House of Commons. 
The House of Commons has the ability to control things by a vote of confidence in the government. If the government is in office, we have established procedures between the legislature and the executive, and these are not being respected. But this self-same House of Commons, for which we are authoritatively told there is no majority for no deal, has voted through the Article 50 Act and the Withdrawal Act. So either the people who voted for those two acts, which includes the majority of parliamentarians for the Article 50 Bill, the overwhelming majority of parliamentarians, didn't know what they were doing, <laughs> or they've forgotten. <laughs> so either they were idle, or they're not quite as intelligent as they like to pretend. <laughs> Actually, I don't think either of those are true. I think they recognise the weight of public opinion to push those acts through was so great that they could not defy the will of the British people. And now, as we get to 65 days to go, they are trying to fight us into submission and they are trying to thwart what they themselves voted for. And this would be a constitutional outrage. The proper, settled arrangements between the executive and the legislature have worked well for centuries. In 1832, when they were going through the reform bill, there was an occasion when it was thought necessary that the king might have to come in person to resolve Parliament. Because the practice was, and I imagine still is, that if the king turns up in person to parole Parliament, any discussion stops straight away. Whereas if it's done by commissioners, we can carry on gassing on for a little bit longer. I hope it will not be necessary for Her Majesty's stay at Sandringham to be interrupted by her in person to parade Parliament. We do not want that sort of constitutional crisis. We want to observe the constitutional norms. Now, I brought this deal for you to see. You may have looked at it. You may have read it. I see my colleague, Mark Francois, who is here, and he's read it several times. Indeed. Um, he usually came round with him, so I, I'm sorry if you haven't got it with you, but I, I've got mine. I'm sorry, boss. <laughs> this document does not leave the European Union properly. And therefore, let me be clear, because I like reading in the newspapers that I've suddenly become a soft touch. <laughs> and so, frankly, it's true in so many ways. I do whatever my children tell me. That is my, and they're all staunch or sceptics. But, um, <laughs> but, but I do wish, of course, for that to be a deal. I always wish to be in the same division lobby as the leader of the Conservative Party. I wish to be a loyal and dutiful supporter of the party I've belonged to for many years. This deal does not deliver Brexit, and it has more than one problem. But overwhelmingly, the biggest problem is the backstop because it divides our nation between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It leaves us potentially in a customs union forever. And it leaves us, whilst we are in it, subject to the European Court of Justice. As long as that backstop is there, I will not break to this deal. And I think that the chances, as I was talking about earlier, of people stopping Brexit are very slim. Of course, any deal would be better than not leaving at all. But this deal, against the risk of not leaving, is not good enough. And it needs fundamental change. But ladies and gentlemen, I think at last, things are going our way. We have heard stories coming out of Ireland that they would like to have a bilateral agreement to keep the border open as the EU has toughened its line on the border between the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. We've heard the Poles say that they are more interested in their relationship with the United Kingdom because of our strong ties than they are particularly <coughs> concerned about the Irish border. That comes from Daniel Kuczynski who was himself born in Poland and is the poorest member of Parliament. We've heard that the Italians are beginning to think that these arrangements are not entirely satisfactory. 
And Mrs. Merkel has said she's willing to work day and night to get something done. So I think there is good news for us to hope that a reformation of this deal could be achieved that could make it acceptable. But ladies and gentlemen, it is not there yet. And until it is, people like me will vote against the deal. And we will always support our friends in the Democratic Unionist Party. Because we, ladies and gentlemen, I speak for myself and for um, conservatives, and I accept that you are a broad church. I was handed a leaflet by the Communist Party. <laughs> and I, I took it. It took me some time. I'm a bit slow, really. It took me some time to realize it was from the Communist Party, because it was pretty sound on the European <laughs> I'm not speaking to you, obviously. I'm speaking to those who are conservatives and unionists. And we will always keep our united kingdom together. So time is short, and we want to hear from Christine, and we may have to vote. So I just want to reiterate these key points. We must not allow our constitutional norms to be overthrown by those who always rejected the vote never liked it, never supported, and determined to frustrate it. That is something we must watch out for and we must oppose. But we must be sensible and we must try and ensure that we leave in the best possible way. I share Roger's view that leaving without a deal on world trade terms is nothing to be frightened of. But if we can do something better and we can bring the whole country with us, I think that is worth doing. I think it may even be worth paying a little bit, but not too much, money for. But that cannot happen with the backstop in place. And ladies and gentlemen, there is hope. There are two types of hope. One is we will get a better deal, but the other hope, TikTok, goes to top. And as it ticks down, we get closer to leaving. And when we leave, we have taken back control. We are in charge. We determine our future. We have the ability to make a success of our lives. And I remind you of this, that that's why we want Brexit. We want Brexit because we believe we make better decisions for ourselves and other people to make for us. We believe that the nation state is the right and legitimate and just body for making decisions about how we are governed. We believe that our democratic institutions will provide the best governmental solutions and the freedom to throw people out if they don't come up with the best solutions is fundamental to how we understand our nation should run. This is such an exciting opportunity for our country. It is in a way a rebirth, a retaking of control to decide how we can establish and create the nation for the next generation, the next 50, the next 100 years. Let us not hold our breath for 65 days, because that might prove tricky. But let us be full of cheer and optimism that we will get the Brexit 17.4 million people voted for us. And Yvette Cooper will not stop us. Yeah.